Welcome back to Maintenance Monday. Bearings are a fundamental part of your bike and they do take a little bit of a hammering. So coming up in this video, I'm gonna explain how to service a cartridge style bearing. The bearings I'm gonna to service today are in the bottom bracket of my Pinarello F12. Now this runs a threaded bottom bracket and inside there I've got ceramic bearings. However, the principles and the process that we're gonna talk through will apply to any cartridge bearing that's fitted onto our bikes, such as the headset, the wheels, the pulley wheels, or as I'm gonna to do today, the bottom bracket of our bike. Now, before we go ahead and remove any of the components off our bike, we're gonna to need to make sure we've got the relevant tools and equipment to do the job. So the first thing we're gonna need is either some disc brake cleaner or some multi-purpose lubricant spray like this. This will mean that we can clean out the inside of the bearing once we've gained access to it. Now, in order to gain access to that bearing, we're gonna to need to remove the components off the bike. But once we've got the bearing off on the workbench, we're gonna either need a small screwdriver such as this or a pick to remove the seal and gain access to the inside of the bearings. Once we've got that, we can then clean it all out and use our cloths to remove any of the grit and grime on the external parts of the bearings and help it from just creating a bit of a mess everywhere. Now, once we've got everything nice and clean, we're gonna to need to install some new grease. You can choose and use whatever grease you like. However, this is what I'm gonna to use today. And then once we're at that stage, the final thing we're gonna need are some new seals to go on our bearing to replace the old ones that we're gonna remove. Now you're gonna to need to make sure that you have the correct size and type of seal for the bearing that you're gonna service. Now, I already know that these fit the bottom racket perfectly, but you could look it up beforehand before removing any of the components from your bike, or if you're still unsure, well you could just remove it all, take the seal off, and then look to order the new ones up. The seals normally have a size code printed on them, and that way you know exactly what to get. Now I've got the bearing removed and in my hand, I need to clean the external parts up and then I need to look to remove any of these external covers to gain access to where the bearing is housed inside. These can be quite tricky to remove. So what I'm gonna use here is a sharp blade. And then that way I can carefully leave that underneath and gently prise that out. Because as I was saying, I don't wanna run the risk of damage in this. So. With that cover removed, I can see the main inside part of the bearing, and then I can see the little blue area here is that main seal, and that's the part which I'm gonna look to then remove and will be replacing. Once that's off, I'll have access to the inside of the bearing where I can see all of the little individual ceramic balls, and at that stage, we can look to blast out all that grease because that's what we're gonna be replacing. Now, if you are gonna use a blade to remove any of these parts, like I've just done, you do need to be extra careful because you don't wanna slip and um, accidentally cut your fingers. Be safe. So using our pick or small screwdriver that we've got, or in fact, the blade we've recently just used, we can then push this down the side of that seal and look to try to force and carefully lever it out. Now, this is the reason why I was saying that you're gonna to have to replace the seal because already you can see how that's dented in there. So now that I've got access to the internal part of the bearing, I can now take my degreaser or maintenance spray or disc brake cleaner even, spray that all inside, work the bearing round and round so that I can blast all of that old grease and any sort of grit and grime that's worked its way in. And then I can look to dry the inside of that bearing out to make sure none of that's left in there before installing the new grease. Now on this example, I've only removed one of the rubber seals. There is in fact another one on the inside edge here, but I don't need to remove that. So if you do have access to both sides of the bearing, then you could remove both seals and replace them, which could be good practice. But in this instance, I'm just gonna do one side so that I can then clean it out, install that grease, and then reinstall our new seal before putting it all back together. So I've actually got that side of the bearing sat in front of a little heater at the moment to make sure all of the products and the cleaners that I've got inside can then dry out. Because before we install our new grease, you wanna make sure that the inside of that bearing is completely dry and free from any of those products that we've just sprayed in to help break that grease down because we don't want that attacking the new stuff that we're putting inside. Now in terms of installing the grease, I'm gonna be using this bike specific grease, but you could use any kind of grease or products that you like. It could be an automotive grease, which is a lot thicker and a bit heavier. That will result in a bearing which has a slightly longer service life because it's gonna be much, much harder to wash that grease out. But that will come at the expense of a little bit of additional resistance and bearing drag added in because it's so much thicker. 
Or you could go the complete other end of the scale and instead of installing a grease such as this, you could perhaps install a thinner oil. That will mean that your bearing will spin much faster and more freely, but at the expense of having to service that bearing much more frequently. So take your pick, decide what's important to you and choose the grease or oil according to what works best for you. When installing the grease into the bearing, it's important that you use the correct amount. Now there isn't a measured amount specific to each bearing, but if you use too little, then the bearing won't have the protection and lubrication that it needs. And if you use too much, well, it's just going to cause a little bit of additional resistance and drag in that bearing. Again, something that you don't need. With no grease in the bearing, you can spin it and see how fast it spins, but you can hear the bearings all rattling around inside. And if there was any load applied to this, it's going to create additional resistance and wear it all out much faster. So that's the reason why we have the grease. So when installing the grease, you can just take the nozzle, angle it so it sits inside to get in between all the ball bearings and then squeeze, drive that grease in and work all the way around. We can then take our finger, wipe, and that'll help push a lot of that grease into place. We can always clear off any excess that we've got. And as we turn the bearing, it's gonna help, help work it in. So turn, rotate the bearing, then use your finger again to help push all that grease into place. When you're installing the new seal onto your bearing, I find it's good practice to get a little bit of grease on your finger and run that round the edges of the seal. That'll help it install slightly easier and also make sure you don't run the risk of catching or tearing those delicate rubber edges. When it comes to installing the seal onto the bearing itself, you need to make sure you have it the correct way around. You can see here we've got this bronzed metal ring around here and that sits on the inside edge. So we would face the bearing like that and then slide the seal in place and carefully work your way around the edge of the seal to seat it into the right place. But we want to make sure that we don't bend it. So that's particularly important and take your time and have a little bit of patience with it. So we've got two bearings here, cleaned all out, fresh grease installed inside and brand new seals ready to go. So that should give plenty of happy kilometers or miles of riding. All I need to do now is install that outer protective cover and then I can then reinstall the bearings onto the bike, pop the crank back on, and oh, we should be good to hit the road. Quick bit of grease onto the threads on the bottom bracket cups and then I'll install this all back in, bottom bracket in, crank on, probably in what, five seconds? Yeah. At this point, you can just give your bike a quick once over to make sure everything's installed correctly and that your bearings are spinning nice and freely. And if they are, well, you can sit back and feel nice and smug. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And if you have, please let me know in the comments section down below. And I'm keen to hear whether you opt for a very thick heavyweight grease or whether you'd run a lightweight oil in your bearings. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, consider subscribing to GCN Tech. See ya.